Kubernetes networking is famously designed around core principles that can vary in implementation. Thus, it's essential to understand the specific way cluster networking works when using GKE. There are various resources we interact with in GKE, so let's break this down, starting with GKE nodes. In GCP, these nodes are VMs that live within the construct of a VPC, in other words, a private network in the cloud. Each GKE node gets a private IP and connectivity to the rest of the cluster and the rest of the network. At cluster creation time, you will need to define your first IP range, the node range, from which these nodes will get their IP address. By default, creating a GKE cluster will also allocate a public IP to each node as well. If you want to lock down your cluster from the internet, it's recommended that you configure GKE to run as a private cluster in which the nodes will not receive a public IP address. If you want to run a private cluster, but also want to establish outbound connections with the internet, you'll need to configure a service like CloudNAT for egress to the internet. The next resource we want to review in GKE are pods, the atomic Kubernetes resource that encompass our containerized application. In Kubernetes, each pod gets its own IP address. In GKE, this is accomplished via alias IP ranges, this means that each pod will have an IP address unique in the VPC and can be natively addressed from other clients in the network. When you create a GKE cluster, you will need to define your second IP range, the range from which pods will get their IP address. Each GKE node gets a number of IPs from this range that it can assign to its pods. By default, a slash 24 is carved out for each node which is 256 IPs in total. Pods can be scheduled and rescheduled on various nodes throughout the lifecycle of the cluster. One challenge with this is that it means that the IP address that each pod gets may change a number of times. This brings us to our final resource for which we must configure an IP range at cluster creation, Kubernetes services. Kubernetes services are how clients within a cluster can access a target set of pods via a stable virtual IP known as cluster IP in Kubernetes. At cluster creation time, we must define a private range for those service cluster IPs. Client pods can access other pods in the cluster via a cluster IP associated with their service. This IP address will remain stable even as the target pods scale up and down or shuffle across the cluster. Hopefully you've gotten a good picture of what needs to be configured at cluster creation time. Given that this IP address management can require careful planning, GKE has introduced two features to make this process easier. The first feature is Flexible Pod Cider. Earlier, we talked about how each node by default will get a slash 24 from which they can assign IP addresses to their pods. But what if we only plan on running 30 pods on a node? We could potentially strand many IP addresses. Flexible Pod Cider allows users to reduce the number of IPs that nodes in a node pool are given to assign to their pods. For example, in node pool A, each node is configured to have a range smaller than a slash 24, from which they can allocate IP addresses to their pods. This helps users reduce stranded IP addresses, which is huge when trying to plan out cluster networking. But what do we do when we cannot predict how many pods we may actually need to run in our cluster? This is where the second GKE feature comes into play, discontiguous multi-pod CIDR. Rather than trying to get a single pod range size correct at cluster creation time, this feature allows users to incrementally increase the IP range provided for pods. For example, in this diagram, we have a second pod range in blue that we have added after cluster creation for pods. In summary, we need to ensure we plan out and allocate IP space for nodes, pods, and services when we create a GKE cluster. GKE provides additional features to help with this planning, enabling users to preserve IP addresses and incrementally grow their cluster's network over time. Now that we've covered the essentials for setting up cluster networking in GKE, Visit the links here to learn more. With the concepts discussed in this video, we're confident you'll be on your way to building a GKE cluster that suits your needs. Stay tuned as we expand on other GKE topics in GKE Essentials.